Hi everyone, welcome to Sunya IS. In this class, we will discuss the next part of our modern Indian history series. In today's lecture, we will discuss the next chapter, which is very very important. And this chapter is about the emergence of new force. Okay, new forces basically, socialistic ideas, and trade unions. So this is the time when. swaraj party decided to participate in the election and they wanted to be a part of the legislative assembly they wanted to enter in the council and they also wanted to obstruct the government so that nothing could go against the indians anymore now in this scenario socialistic ideas were extremely popular in india if you don't understand socialism you may get confused so let me just give you a brief idea of a difference between capitalism communism and socialism and then i'll tell you that how these ideas came in india and why we got influenced by these ideas okay but before we start let me know if i'm live if i'm audible and visible to you clearly and if it is going fine from your side please let me know Just give me a moment. Let me just check the technical part from my side. Okay, I can see it's working great. Fine. How are you guys doing? How's everything going, guys? I hope you are studying well, and you are enjoying the modern Indian history series. Please like the video and please share it with your friends. Please. Okay. Viresh there is a question that can you tell the author for topic wise question paper book uh i think uh, there is no author but there is a publication if you can just search it on amazon you will get it because see we are on a platform so i can't uh, take few names here as it is a live session just try to understand what i'm saying go to amazon and search topic wise ds pyqs or topic wise ds questions mcqs so you will get practice question books also and you will get the uh, book by the uh, you know Uh, pyqs also so both the sets are useful i suggest to buy the pyqs and also the uh, you know questions which are practice questions so you will have pyqs and practice questions both the uh, both the things with you now how would you think that uh, you know if it is fine to go or not and how to clear this confusion i'll just tell you a si simple idea whenever you buy something as a upsc aspirant any book author or publication and if you don't know that uh, you know if it is right or not then i'll just tell you few publications are very famous and they are fine and you can always buy them like arihant disha and then we have one publication of uh, megro hills so these books are always fine these publications are always trustworthy don't go with any uh, local publication with peculiar names and uh, new names new publications in which uh, the content is really not clear and if there are no reviews about it don't buy it the best way to buy the books is go to a bookshop read it by yourself and decide accordingly if you are able to understand the language and the pattern or not if you feel like uh, having familiarity with the concept and understanding the pattern in a book then you must buy it even if it is not suggested by anyone but if you are loving the style of the book writing go for it but if you don't want to uh, you know hustle in searching things just follow uh, the few publications which i just mentioned here and follow only the genuine authentic publications which are already famous in market and uh, they are, they are established since 50 years in the market and upsc aspirants are following it since very long just follow that it would be safe for you fine i hope you understood that why i can't take the names of few uh, you know materials books and names like that but if you will just search it you will get the point okay 
so now let's start the topic in today's session we will discuss the uh, new trend new ideas socialism and the socialistic principles but before we go to socialism and before we start discussing it you need to understand what is really all discussion about and what is new ideas here see basically when we talk about new ideas you know in this chapter two points are there first is economic idea like what changes are going to be there uh, in the economy of india and how could we pursue communism socialism or capitalism or a mixed kind of economy second is the way to protest like how could they protest how could indians protest at that time so that they get independence so the new phase of revolutionary groups many revolutionary groups and organizations they thought that we need to change the strategy why because with the last strategy they could not achieve anything so they wanted to change the strategy this time so to change the strategy they decided to uh, just follow a simple rule here they thought that uh, before we plan something we need to see the resources funds the collection of funds and also it should be more organized because they learned with their experience the past experience of first phase of revolutionary activities the failure of non cooperation movement and so many things now gave them a good idea so they had a good experience now and they could follow the intent very well that how could they have a organization and uh, they also uh, knew the new ways to hide uh, from the government functionaries and machineries how to uh, you know do something and not getting uh, caught and not getting imprisoned even if you are in jail then what can you do so many things you know they were now out and many books were also written on the revolutionary activities and ideas to support the leaders who always participated in these kind of conf uh, conspiracies against the britishers so these new trends were there if we i talk about the economic trend trend or the socio, socio economic development which was there in india here we were very much influenced by socialism so what is socialism you need to understand see when we see socialism in india it is also known as gandhian socialism or sometimes we can, we call it a nehruvian socialism or a welfare socialism in india understand what is socialism and why we followed it basically you need to have a clarity between four words if you understand these four words then it everything will be clear to you capitalism communism socialism and there is one more word which i'll just write here only no i'll write it here communalism sometimes students confuse communalism with communism in communism there is no l okay l is here right communism is an economic concept economy but communalism is about community hindu community muslim community like that okay fine so i'll just start this uh, uh, table making with you by just asking you one small question how many of you can define capitalism how many of you are clear about capitalism what is capitalism and what do you mean by a capitalist economy the capitalism which was followed by usa countries like usa it was a market economy market economy 
in which everything was dependent on demand and supply it was all about demand and supply right so if it is demanded in the market then only we will supply okay let's understand it with a small example let's say car is in demand luxury cars so in market suppliers will make luxury cars even if it is not good for environment even if it is not affordable to everyone they will still make the car if it is in demand if they could earn the profit so capitalism is always about profit making they only want profit so profit is always high to get profit they always worship talent they give value to talent right so many artists poets painters from india even engineers doctors once they learn and get educated they leave the country and go and settle in the foreign countries everyone wants to go and settle in a foreign country why because they knew that their knowledge would be having a value in any other country more value more value means more salary more payment extra payment a painter in india may be just a small artist but he or she can become a great artist if he is in paris or if she is in paris so this is a good uh, you know understanding with the capitalism that they really value the talent and hard work if you are hard working if you are talented you will always get benefited if you are in a capitalist country fine but the problem is that they do a lot of exploitation and there is always a problem of gap between rich and poor because rich people they invest more and then they become more rich but poor people would always be poor so there would be a gap a social gap is always there in a capitalist country in a capitalist economy it is a market driven economy it is all about profit it is all about demand it is all about demand and supply chain but communism is a it is somehow you can for example say russia and china they are not market driven they are state driven state control government control is always there government is always having a very strict control and very strict guidelines and rules are going to be there in a communism economy in a communist country so what government will do they will take care of each and every activity of economy what to be produced how to be produced how to be distributed uh, whom to be distributed all the basic questions and things and decisions would be in the hands of the state means the government now government you know how they work if you go to a government hospital and if you go to a private hospital go to a government college and go to a private college you will be able to see the difference right in the government driven things you don't see a quality they only talk about quantity they only fulfill your basic needs but when you talk about quality there is no quality at all very less quality but there would be no exploitation also because they don't prefer luxury they prefer necessity they will not make cars for everyone they will make cycle why because they will say cycle is something which anyone can buy even the poor people can buy cycle it is good for environment it is easy to maintain and use so we will not produce luxury cars we will make cycles only and they are very very strict but if we talk about socialism it is a part of communism only it is a liberal hand of communism liberal hand of communism how in socialism they are not that strict they say that don't follow a closed door economy like this you if you don't want to uh, you know have any market driven things here no problem but we can still coexist with the market so they can coexist with the market they say that in few of the cases in few of the activities market is is important for few of the medical services or it may be for telecommunication or anything like that they say that still we can't just eliminate market completely let's keep a window open okay 
they say let's keep a window open however communism is very strict they are closed door economy closed completely closed they don't open their door for any other country they are very strict but in socialism they open the doors for other countries for other markets for private traders and sometimes they say that we can give you a open window so you can say that uh, capitalism in usa uh, is something where 100% it is all about market okay russia and china who used to follow communism uh, they were sometimes very very strict and they were 100% trade control they had initially okay but in socialism it is not 100 100% you can say 80% government control and 20% uh market control okay 20% it will be about profit and 80% largely it will be about government decision of basic goods basic necessities so you can say that socialism looks better india was also uh, somehow it was uh, very much influenced by this socialist idea that we can coexist with the market in few points so that a huge level of, of exploitation a uh, big social gap will never come in india that's why socialistic ideas were very famous but after independence india adopted mixed economy okay this is india before independence before independence okay this is india after independence when we started indian started liking mixed economy where we gave 50% to government and 50% to market right now we are here in 2024 25 you will see that now we are more going towards the privatization and globalization so we are being 70% market and 30% government and the government control is reducing day by day because we are now more profit oriented but we are not talking about today's scenario we are reading modern indian history so we need to discuss the scenario during the independence struggle of india means pre independence era so when british uh, raj was there when uh, britishers controlled india and when we were fighting for independence at that time socialism was best for us why because we needed more basic needs than profit we could still manage with low quality we could manage with uh, with low quality but we could not manage without basic necessities getting fulfilled because poverty was very very high we were poor so we said okay we can't afford this much this is too high but still we will go with this one because basic needs are fine for us but now you see that people started earning more indians are uh, you know educated and they are having better jobs opportunities so we are now well connected with the world and nowadays we are very much open to new things and that's why we are now profit oriented but at that time we are we were only basic needs oriented quantity mattered not quality okay cycle was affordable for us so we used to use cycle right at that time cycle was very very popular so that's why communism and socialism was extremely important for us and people started liking these ideas clear i hope you understood the doubt okay right answer santosh the economy driven only on profit is the capitalist economy so if i ask you that when we read this chapter the socialistic trend or the socialistic ideas how do you feel about it why indians liked it and why the marxian or socialist ideas were so famous in india why people at that time hated capitalism and still in india you will see today people don't see business in a very positive way okay if you talk about money and profit loss every time 
यू नो समाइम्स इवन इन अ फैमिली वी हैव सीन कि अरे तू बनिया है क्या ऐसे कौन बोलता है ऐसे कौन बात करता है डोंट डोंट बिहेव लाइक अ बनिया डोंट बिहेव लाइक अ बिजनेस तू मेरे साथ बिजनेस कर रहे हो मैं इमोशनल हूँ एंड यू आर डूइंग बिजनेस विद मी ओके यू आर हेयर फॉर फायदा तुम प्रॉफिट के लिए हो प्रॉफिट बिजनेस बनिया मनी माइंडेड स्टिल वॉच इन अ नेगेटिव सेंस इन इंडिया टूडे इज इंट इट इफ यू हैव डिसाइडेड टू प्रिपेयर फॉर यू पी एस सी एंड इफ यू डिस्कस इट विद योर फैमिली फिफ्टी टू सेवेंटी परसेंट टाइम्स यू विल गेट द सपोर्ट राइट फैमिली विल से ओके फाइन दिस इज अ गुड थिंग इफ यू वॉन्ट टू स्टार्ट टू इट इन थर्टी परसेंट केसेज आई हैव सीन दैट फैमिलीज दमसेल्व दे पुश किड्स टू जॉइन एंड प्रिपेयर फॉर सिविल सर्विसेज बिकॉज दे वॉन्ट देयर चिल्ड्रेन टू प्रिपेयर एंड गो फॉर इट बिकॉज ऑफ फैमिली प्रेशर एंड सोशल प्रेशर ऑल्सो मेनी ऑफ द एस्पेरेंट्स कम एंड स्टार्ट द प्रिपरेशन राइट सो देर इज अ सपोर्ट फॉर द यू पी एस सी प्रिपरेशन वी कैन से बट स्टिल यू विल सी दैट देर इज अ सपोर्ट फॉर यू पी एस सी प्रिपरेशन बट इफ यू प्लान टू स्टार्ट अ कैफे और अ स्टॉल और अ पकौड़ा स्टॉल और अ मोमो स्टॉल यू वोंट गेट सपोर्ट even if you could earn money nicely even if you could make more money than an is officer still your parents might not support you if you are not coming from a banya family or a business family you may not get any support or people may not feel like having you know uh, you as a very high social order or having a position in society that's why uh, you know many of the vaishyas a uh, basically business community traders and uh, uh, you know uh, people who were there in trade and commerce those people during the ancient times to uplift their social status they joined new religions like jainism and buddhism because in hinduism they knew that the brahman dominance will always be there and they will always be in the third category so they wanted to come on the first category and that's why you see today that jainis and manias all of them are making good money because they you know somehow very much got uh, aligned with the thought of a change and get uplifted their social status now let's come to it here again uh, basically why we hated capitalism at that time because capitalism was connected to co- uh, colonialism directly i hope you understand this how capitalism is connected to colonialism they thought that because of industries in britain Britain colonized India. India became colony. India is getting exploited because Britishers are capitalist in their nature. We hated capitalism because we hated the British ideology. We hated capitalism because we were getting exploited. due to the factories and industries developing in britain that's why we still hate this idea of business today in india right we uh, we don't have good entrepreneur schools in india we don't value entrepreneurship the manufacturing sector is weak in india we don't really value the manufacturing sector industrial sector factories in india we should give respect to these people who are entrepreneurs who are giving jobs who are not job seekers but they are job givers but people don't support them right in society there is a no there is no value for an entrepreneur there is no value for a chai wala there is no value for a cafe owner people don't value them even if they earn very good money people will say okay if they are making money but still look at the work they are doing so this kind of mindset is still there in india 
So just assume at that time how high it could be. The mentality which was against capitalism, which was against profit making people, was against Britain and industries and factories because we had faced a lot of exploitation. We got exploited because of this idea and that's why socialistic ideas became famous in India. Who gave the idea of communism? Karl Marx. So the idea of Marx and socialist thinkers, it inspired many groups to come into existence as socialists and communists. And these ideas resulted in rise of a left wing within Congress. Left wing means those who supported socialism or communism. Left. Left means socialism, communism. Right. Right means capitalism. Okay. Right means capitalism. So, the ideas of Marx and socialist thinkers inspired many groups to come into existence as socialists and communists and that's why a left wing, a segment within the Congress leaders got started and it was represented by Jawaharlal Nehru and Subhash Chandra Bose. Now, why these two leaders are so important? Because at that time, Jawaharlal Nehru and Subhash Chandra Bose, they were the young leaders. Okay, they used to drive youngsters of India. And all the people, all the youngsters of India especially, used to follow these two leaders. Jawaharlal Nehru and Subhash Chandra Bose. They, you can say that Subhash Chandra Bose was a tough competition for Jawaharlal Nehru for the position of being a Prime Minister of Independence of India. If not Jawaharlal Nehru, Subhash Chandra Bose would always be the, uh, you know, PM of India after independence in the eyes of youngsters. But Subhash Chandra Bose was very radical and sometimes violent also. That's why he had clash with Gandhiji. And Gandhiji never understood the ideas and the ways of Subhash Chandra Bose. It doesn't mean that they used to hate each other. It was just an ideological clash. Somehow, they were not able to manage and convey things to them. Sometimes what happens that you are a nice person and the other person is also nice. But you don't connect. You both don't connect. Why? Because the ways and thoughts are different. Subhash Chandra Bose, as he had different thoughts, he was compelled to resign from the Congress later. He left Congress. He started his own forward block. He started his own Azad, uh, Azad Hind, Hind Forj and uh, planned a lot to get independence for India. But he was not able to, you know, get it. Matlab, successful nahi tha itna, but at least he tried. But as his thoughts were sometimes against Gandhiji, he had to leave Congress party later. But initially, he was there in Congress, he was there with uh, Jawaharlal Nehru and Subhash Chandra Bose was considered a great leader of India at that time. Even today, we remember him. So, at that time what happened, a lot of Marxist and socialistic ideas were there in trend. And younger nationalists, they were critical of both Swarajist and No Changers. They said, Swarajist... They just joined the politics and now they are working with the government. And no changers are stuck with the constructive work only. Is there any way to achieve independence like this? This is not going towards independence. So they advocated a more consistent and anti-imperialist stance in form of a Purna Swaraj slogan, complete independence. So they were influenced by awareness and they emphasized the importance of combining nationalism and anti-imperialism with social justice. Like today we follow social, uh, you know, uh, welfare socialism in India. What is welfare socialism? Where we need to focus on the rural economy also. We want to be self-sufficient also. We want to help poor also. Government and even in the DPSP. 
government ensures the constitution ensures that the policies should always to help the poor section of india to uplift the poor and weak section of india to make them grow we should uplift them right so this uplifting nature is known as welfare socialism which we even follow today right the idea of donation the idea of helping each other the idea of having sympathy towards each other these ideas were very much highlighted at that point in india even today it is very much highlighted right we are always helpful indians are very helpful to each other you always feel like you know giving things to uh, you know and sharing things and we believe in having a humanity however i understand that the world is changing and people are uh, sometimes they are cheating and they are not really behaving in a good way but not everyone there are always few exceptions there are always few things which get generalized at a point of time but i see mixed kind of people in the society right so you will also find that this is always there in each and every era we have few influencers and people so they were also getting aware they also understood the power of nationalism and they also understood that they need to be anti colonialist anti imperialist in nature and they need to be very much defining in social justice so if we talk about the early socialist and communist groups we had many leaders like early groups of communist leaders if we say virendra nath chattopadhyay bhupendra nath datta and barakatullah these revolutionaries these leaders they were very very famous and they used to work outside india also converted to marxism Shripad Amrit Dange he published a book named Gandhi versus Lenin Gandhi who was there in India Lenin of Russia who used to talk about socialism okay if you talk about gandhi ji he always used to discuss atmanirbhar bharat self sufficient economy self sufficient rural economy rural india right so here in this book dange he showed his preference for lenin because lenin was socialistic in nature in 1922 he founded the socialist and the first socialist weekly in india through this journal on 16th september 1924 dange announced the formation of indian socialist labor party so indian socialist labor party was born and it was a fragment of the indian national congress only within the indian national congress the indian socialist labor party there was one more leader singar velu chetiar singar velu chetiar was an old communist lawyer announced the formation of labor kisan party of hindustan the communist party of india cpi was founded in 1920 in tashkent and this is very very important tashkent is now the capital of uzbekistan it was by mn roy okay mn roy a very important person when we talk about the constitution of india and the person who were always there uh, you know at a very early stage combining and manage, managing things for us together mn roy was a very important person abani mukherji and others following the second comintern congress if you don't know second comintern congress there was comintern and uh, international groups to uh, lead socialism in the world and uh, attach socialist uh, a uh, government and people together so that people could come together and discuss things so mn roy was also the first to be elected to the comintern leadership peshawar conspiracy case is a very very important case here uh, which i want to discuss with you because many of the organizations they now changed their strategy to protest against government so there is a case which was very very popular fine let's understand this case guys those of you who are not liking and sharing the session i again want to say that please like it and share it with your uh, friends every day the attendance and the views should increase in the class we should get and reach to more and more learners every day 
so please ensure that you are helping me to achieve this and get more and more views right so if you are not sharing these lectures please do it let's come to the topic again peshawar conspiracy case 1922 it was another significant event at tashkent when thousands of muslim mujahids or mujahideen they were pilgrims okay basically these pilgrims they were disappointed by the british government with the british government's attitude towards the sultan of turkey so they joined the royal military school mn royal military school which was there in tashkent so during their return to india they were caught by the police and they were tried at peshawar so when they were tried and punished it was known as the peshawar conspiracy case and many of the communists they were imprisoned in the kanpur bolshevik conspiracy case in 1924 including s a dange muzaffar ahmed shaukat usmani and nalini gupta the cpi was found in 1925 at indian communist conference in kanpur so cpi is very very important for us we all need to remember this name clear now formation of workers and peasants party it was again a very very important party you can see that how poor people general public are getting representation the main political work of these early communists was to organize several parties of peasants together so that they can have and hold it at a one single platform so all the peasants and workers parties within the congress they came together and they wanted to function as a front organization of the cpi okay so there was a labor swaraj party it was in bengal 1925 to 26 and it was the first organization of inc it had peasants also it had workers also and it was later renamed as peasants and workers party of bengal and please remember that it was organized by muzaffar ahmed basically muzaffar ahmed okay which with the help of qazi nazrul islam okay so qazi nazrul uh, islam and uh, muhammad uh, muzaffar ahmed they all came together these people uh, you know they were very famous and uh, qazi nazrul uh, islam he was the havaldar in 49 bengal regiment later gained popularity as a bengali poet so please remember his name because they may ask you in prelims that who got famous as the name of bengali poet so ahmed also brought out a magazine navyug okay if we talk about congress labor party in bombay 1926 we had a congress labor party and it propagated its program and ideology through the use of press and it published it its main organ kranti in marathi please remember congress labor party had kranti in marathi language there was a kriti kisan party also which was in punjab 1926 it was very very important all these facts are important for prelims even if you can't remember it just listen to the lecture listen to it peacefully revise it later in your book and by solving mcqs you will remember it so kriti kisan party was there the party was headed by sohan singh josh and it included many other members also other members of 1914 the main journal was kirti workers earlier founded by bhai santok singh and uh, mehnat kash or mehnat kash means worker in urdu it was another important journal wpp is very very important workers people party merit october 1928 it was the formation of party it was attended by british communist philip spratt and that's why it's very famous so they may ask you in prelims that uh, which party was there uh, that you know during which formation the british communist philip spratt came so just remember that it was just due to the socialistic trends in india clear now if we talk about activism of indian youth students leagues were bring uh, you know being formed all over the uh, place everywhere students were being 
uh, you know very active and that's why somehow britishers also thought that they should control universities they should control uh, you know schools very nicely and they started publishing many acts and uh, laws and regulations to control the universities to control the students universities act was there because they knew that the uh, these schools and universities became epicenter of nationalism to grow students in a nationalistic way students conference were being held everywhere jawaharlal nehru presided over all india bengal students conference in 1928 if we talk about peasants agitation peasants agitation in the united provinces sought revision of tnc laws lower rents protection from eviction and death relief similarly peasant uprising occurred in andhra rampa region rajasthan and the rayatwari areas of bombay and madras if you talk about vallabhbhai patel he led the bardoli satyagraha of gujarat in 1928 which is very very famous satyagraha here yeah. so basically these pe peasant agitations were going on already a lot of activism was there indian youth was there and people started making their own uh, you know organizations trade unions also got formed so a growth of trade union was also there the all india trade union congress aituc founded in 1920 led the trade union movement and its first president was lala lajpat rai and its first general secretary was v m pawar tilak was also the other evocative spirit here in this particular trade union which is very very famous so please remember the name all india trade union congress ai tuc please look at the important sessions of ai tuc the first session happened on october 1920 in bombay by lala lajpat rai president and secretary was v m pawar second was in the uh, november december 1921 uh jhari was the place joseph Bapit, uh, baptista was the president divan uh, chaman lal was the general secretary the third one happened in march 1923 at lahore cr das president divan chaman lal again general secretary seventh happened in march 1927 delhi divan chaman lal was president nm joshi was there as general secretary Ninth happened in December 1928. Jharia Jawaharlal Nehru, President N M Joshi, was General Secretary. The tenth happened in 1929. It is the date when complete independence was declared at Nagpur. Subhash Chandra Bose was the President, and S V Desh Pandey was the General Secretary. Why these first, second, third, seventh, ninth, tenth are important? Because at these sessions only. very important leaders were there as presidents or general secretary that's why i have mentioned it for you and during the 1920s major strikes occurred at, uh, at kharagpur railway workshops tata iron and steel works jamshedpur and the bombay textile mills which involved 150000 workers and lasted 5 months and uh, buckingham uh, carnatic mills were also there now if we talk about caste movement uh justice movement was also there it was started by c n modaliar t m nayar and p tyagaraja in madras presidency to secure jobs and representation for non brahmans in the legislature it seek for separate representation for the lower caste in the legislature support for various non brahman communities i uh, you know here uh, don't read it inc it is including okay including the intermediate castes backward classes and scheduled caste so so many you know caste movements justice movement to get justice to uplift the people in society started and many of the backward classes leaders they thought that we should come forward now and we should have a fight for our, our own self respect so self respect movement were there in 1925 under periyar ev ramaswami naikar he was in madras he aimed to reject brahmanical religion and culture it aimed to establish a society based on the principle of equality and social justice and he also advocated for alternative wedding ceremonies 
that did not involve brahman priests so that without the brahman priest they could have the wedding ceremonies and they wanted to show that we don't need brahmans to get any ceremony there to get any legitimacy in the society satyashodhak activities were also there in satara maharashtra it was also very very famous bhaskar rao jadhav of maharashtra inspired by the ideas of jyotiba phule formed a anti brahman and strongly anti congress party which attacked the caste system and claimed to speak for the bahujan samaj against the money lenders and brahmans mahars were under ambedkar mahar basically it is a name of a, 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 a social group basically it's a caste and kerala's radical izavas were there led by k ayyappan and c k seven uh, yadavs in bihar they wanted to have some social advancement so they were also fighting unionist party led by fazle hussain punjab it was there in punjab so you can see how everyone wanted to have more and more control support upliftment and share in the society now we need to discuss few revolutionary activities like in punjab up bihar and everywhere we saw many revolutionary activities two strands of the hindustan republican association hra emerged two strands means two parts of hra hindustan republican association what is this it's a revolutionary group it's a revolutionary platform it's an organization and they wanted to bring revolution they wanted to overthrow the british government so surya sen was leading the yugantar group and anushilan and later the chitagong revolt group in bengal okay revolutionary activities were very very high in 1920s because gandhi ji participated in non cooperation and then he withdrew so major influences if you say upsurge of working class trade unionism russian revolution of 1917 journals extolling self sacrifice of revolutionaries such as atma shakti sarathi bijoli in these journals what they used to do they used to write very nicely about the uh, brave leaders whenever they saw that any self sacrifice is happening they used to talk about it and discuss it a lot they used to make the person very famous like a hero bandi jeevan was also there which was written by sachin sanyal pathar dabi was written by sharad chandra chatterjee these very important books are there and please remember these names because it is important for prelims okay they may ask you in prelims clear do you guys have any doubts i hope there are no doubts but in case you get any doubts let me know now we can see that so many other revolutionary groups were also there like in punjab kakori robbery robbery was there then we can see that how hindustan socialist republic association worked so i just wanted to discuss these things with you okay these revolutionary activities with you but before i go for it let's take a small one minute break before we move to the next point and next slide let me just have some water and if you guys have any doubts please let me know Okay, so now let's discuss D 
the revolutionary activities please understand that this is the second phase of revolutionary activities which we are doing okay it's the second phase so let's talk about different states if we talk about punjab and united provinces and in bihar area up bihar area it was dominated by hindustan republican association army or hra which we later became hsra uh, by calling it hindustan socialist republic association or socialist republic army because s word was added by leaders later especially bhagat singh wanted to add the socialism here okay he wanted to be socialist so it was dominated by hindustan republican association army founded in 1924 in kanpur by ram prasad bismil jokesh chandra chatterjee and sachin sanyal here sachin sanyal is very very important as he is a guiding force behind this second phase of revolutionary activities so sachin sanyal was also there to organize armed revolution and they wanted to overthrow the colonial rule and establish federal republic of us of india uh, based on adult franchise where all the indians they could come together and have a federal republic there was a kakori robbery also because see to get uh, started with something and to lead a movement they wanted to have funds they wanted to have money but they had no money so to get money they started doing robberies and all okay so kakori robbery was also there the men held up a train in kakori which is near lucknow and they looted official railway cash it was a big crackdown okay when they got caught later there was a setback for hra because at the end of the trial those leaders like ashrafullah khan ram prasad bismil roshan singh and rajendra lahiri they were sentenced to death and hanged but at this point chandrashekhar azad was also caught but chandrashekhar azad he was the only hra leader who succeeded in escaping the arrest and who just saved himself and later he only guided bhagat singh sukhdev rajguru if we talk about sachindranath sanyal he wrote bandi jeevan which became the textbook of the revolutionaries he was also the author of hra manifesto manifesto is what ghoshna patra in which all the important uh, set of ideas and promises are written for a party the revolutionary sanyal versus gandhi debate was very very popular at that time it was published in young indian during 1920 to 24 sachin sanyal was the mentor of revolutionaries like chandrashekhar azad and bhagat uh, bhagat singh and uh, uh, sarat chandra chatterjee also wrote a novel pathar dabi in 1926 pathar dabi is uh, you know a very important novel it means the demands of the road the book is about the secret society named pathar dabi demands of the road so hindustan socialist republican association hra it reorganized again and it became hsra hsra at 1928 they meet to address the kakori setback they wanted to discuss how our leaders got arrested and what mistakes they committed so andar chandrashekhar azad they came here other leaders also join our hero bhagat singh sukhdev uh, bhagwati charan vohra b k sinha shiv verma yashpal jaydev uh, kapoor of up all these important leaders they came together in 1928 they met here in hsra reorganized it the book philosophy of bomb was written by bhagwati charan vohra with the help of chandrashekhar azad and yashpal very important book there was saunders murder in december 1928 here just pay attention and understand how it is linked with bhagat singh so what happened after lala lajpat rai's death bhagat singh azad and rajguru they shot dead saunders the police officer responsible uh of this particular commission okay so uh, bombay central legislative assembly was there april 1929 where bhagat singh batukeshwar azad and uh, you know uh, other leaders they were there so basically what they did they were against the public safety bill and trade dispute bill so bhagat singh sukhdev rajguru they you know just uh, 
did something here to make some noise and uh, clearly start the raising their voice against the british rule so they just uh, wanted to place a bomb there but that bombing and that bombardment was very harmless it was not to kill anyone but bhagat singh sukhdev rajguru they were tried in lahore conspiracy case due to this one and bhagat singh founded a socialistic youth organization also naujawan bharat sabha with himself as the founding secretary in 1926 so we will talk about bhagat singh and getting uh, you know um, like how he got imprisoned and hanged which was very much related and debated with gandhi ji the gandhi irvin pact i will come to this later but here just understand a small part of bhagat singh's involvement if we talk about bhagat singh he was very much on the lines of mezzini's young italy movement so he wrote similarly on the same line and he was very much inspired by mezzini okay bhagat singh and sukhdev they also organized the lahore students union for political and education career of these students to uh, politically educate students and to educate in other ways also jatin das became the first martyr on 64th day of his fast as he was trying to protest against the britishers so these leaders and these all the names are very very important please remember azad was involved in a bit to blow up viceroy irvin strain in 1929 but chandrashekhar azad he was uh, encountered by a police and bhagat singh sukhdev rajguru they were hanged in 1931 if we, we talk about bengal after the death of cr das in 1925 the leadership got divided a lot of changes happened so bengal congress broke into two fractions one was led by jm sen gupta anushilan group and uh, you know anushilan group uh, was there it, it joined him other was led by subhash chandra bose yugantar group okay which backed him so just remember these two names anushilan group and yugantar group there was a chitagong armory raid also which happened in april 1930 surya sen who was popularly known as master da he participated in non cooperation movement he got jailed in 1926 to 28 for revolutionary activities he gathered a large number of revolutionaries including ganesh ghosh ambika chakravarti loknath paul and all these leaders they became uh, you know very famous at that time uh and then uh, you know uh, you will see that surya sen became a secretary of chitagong district congress committee he organized a raid to occupy two main armories here because th they wanted to control some arms and ammunition here so to get control on the arms and ammunition and disturb the government they destroyed the telephone and telegram connect to chitagong and dislocated the railway also they raided under the banner of indian republican army chitagong branch very successful they hoisted national flag also and they proclaimed a provisional government which was very very successful somehow these activities made britishers understand that now indians want complete independence and they won't listen to anyone surya sen had muslim such as satar meer ahmed fakir ahmed mia in his group also if we talk about the women the role of women is also very important preeti lata wadedar she died conducting a raid kalpana datta she was tried and life sentenced along with the surya sen shanti ghosh and suniti chanderi he, she shot a dm abina das she fired point point black at the governor at convocation so all these leaders were there okay so now we have covered the uh, revolutionary activities new trend socialistic ideas we'll discuss the uh, entire uh, scenario of bhagat singh with the gandhi ji and gandhi irvin pact in the next class and uh, we need to start a discussion on simon commission so simon commission simon boycott movement what happened with lala lajpat rai how things you know turned in a very bad way after the slogan of simon go back we will discuss it in detail tomorrow so this chapter is going to be there with you fine and i hope you like the session you just need to share it please share it in all the social medias and platform whatever you use 
and tell this course uh, you know try to spread the idea of this course by letting your friends classmates and other people know about it by sharing it by uh, you know commenting and by liking it you will be helping our team in a very good way so i hope guys we will see you again tomorrow thank you so much for watching and if you have any doubts please comment down i am here for one more minute and then we will end the session I can see that uh, Siri, Surya and Anant Ram Kumar, you guys are asking for economy daily lecture series. Okay, I'll just try to start it. Uh, thank you so much for your coming. And uh, I think that economy series and uh, the demand for a daily lecture series for economy is needed by you all. So I have understood this very nicely. I'll ensure that you guys get a economy daily lecture series very very soon. Okay, don't worry. We will be there to discuss it. And uh, don't worry. I'll just ask the team to start something like this for you. Okay. I don't see any other doubts till now. So I think we should end the session here. See you guys then. Take care. Bye bye.